Julie Buck. I uh, work in Grace Harbor County. Uh, my main role is sort of the EMS medical program director. Uh, I have worked at both of the hospitals in the county as well. Um, for those of you who don't know us down here, Grace Harbor has two hospitals in the county. Uh, one is Summit Pacific, a critical access hospital. Uh, they have 10 inpatient beds and 10 ED beds. The other hospital is Harbor Regional Health, formerly known as uh, Grace Harbor Community Hospital. And on, in good times, we've got 49 beds open to admit to. Um, there's 19 beds in the ER, but they have rarely ever been fully staffed. So they tend to run out of 10 rooms in the ER as well. The uh, both are having pretty severe uh, nursing shortages right now. Uh, in addition to as high a COVID numbers as we've seen throughout the pandemic, our COVID numbers, we got spared pretty early on, um, but now we're seeing pretty substantial rates. Um, the both of the hospitals have had to close inpatient beds, uh, community hospital it actually closed an entire floor. So they have half the admitting beds they usually have. And uh, Summit Pacific has also had to close inpatient beds to mobilize nursing to cover the ER. We've lost a lot of nurses over the last few months. Um, the, um, just to give you a snap, a snapshot from last week. Uh, some, some days we have higher volume, some days we have higher acuity, some days we have both. Uh, one day last week we had a community hospital, which is the, the larger of the two. They had three nurses in the ER, one tech, one provider, uh, four intubated patients, uh, no RT on staff for the past week. They sort of had a domino effect of being short staff for RT and one after the other quit. Uh, they had res a res respiratory therapist. Is sorry, respiratory RT. therapy, yes. So the people who manage the, the intubated patients, the actual mechanics of the vents. Um, they had four intubated patients in the ER, three others uh, in addition to those four waiting for transfer for a total of 21 patients being managed by the three nurses and one provider. Summit Pacific, who doesn't even keep respiratory therapists on staff, um, had three intubated patients they were trying to transfer as well. This has put a ton of strain on um, all of the hospital staff. Uh, it not just There's not just a nursing shortage staff, but um, I'm, I'm sure people all across the state have experienced um, housekeeping, the registration, respiratory therapists, just every role in the hospital is understaffed at this point. Uh, this has a downward effect uh, as far as EMS goes with all of those patients boarding in the ER, they actually can't continue to accept the volume from pre-hospital that they normally would. So we, six months ago, I'd say our hospitals virtually never went on divert. It just wasn't a thing we could do because we're so remote. Um, that has become almost the norm. Uh, community just came off of divert that lasted almost a week. Sorry, my throat's dry. So that affects EMS because now what's typically a 45 minute transport has turned into an hour and 45 minute transport. Um, with, the, with the EMS crews being out of their districts longer, there's longer turnaround times to get to the next call. So we, we tend to have anywhere from 10 minute to hour transports for EMS on a normal day. If we have to transport out of county because everyone's on divert, that adds at least an hour transport time. So we're talking up to two hours from the site um, of the response, one direction. That puts an additional strain on our neighboring counties. Um, we know that it's the, the hospitals that are usually are receiving hospitals are also overwhelmed and we're trying to transfer more patients to them when they, they really don't have the space for the patients that are coming in their own door. 
So it's kind of this snowball effect that has put a ton of strain on everyone involved. Um, I have some numbers for how many COVID patients um, community admitted in September. Um, there was a total of 31 COVID positive admissions. Uh, seven were vaccinated. 10 of those patients expired and two were transferred. Um, in October, it looks like those numbers are leveling off, uh, but the September numbers were the highest admit rates that we'd had for COVID at this point. And we come from a county that I think we finally cleared 50% uh, vaccination rate, but we haven't hit 60 for sure. So we're struggling with the vaccine hesitancy as well. 